earthquakes are one of the most destructive forces of nature. They could induce substantial movement in the ground, which results in the development of excessive forces in structural components, resulting in their failure. The intent of analysis is to somehow predict the maximum response of the structure, such that it could be designed to withstand it. This is done with the help of an analysis tool called the Response Spectrum. It works by directly providing us the maximum response of the structure based on its natural frequency. The response spectrum is generated for a specific seismic zone where we wish to build the structure and is defined by the seismic properties of the nearby fault lines. In this video, we are going to learn how the response spectrum is created for a particular seismic zone and how it is used. Earthquake happened due to movement of ground along the fault lines. This movement results in a release of energy that travels through the Earth in the form of waves. It is recorded at a particular site with the help of a seismometer. The seismometer gives us a record of the movement of the ground in terms of displacement, velocity, and acceleration over time. This record is termed as time history. The time history is at a particular site could either be recorded during a past earthquake or be generated by studying the nearby fault lines. Time histories can also be recorded at any location on an existing structure to get the movement of the structural component over time. This response graph would be completely different from the earthquake motion, as the seismic wave is modified by the stiffness and inertia of the structure. To study this mathematically, we have to first look into the equilibrium equation governing the behavior of a structure subjected to seismic load. This we can understand with the help of a simple ball on top of a sticker model. When load is applied on the ball, it moves in the direction of application of load. This displacement is directly proportional to the magnitude of applied force. More is the force, more is the displacement. The constant of proportionality is called stiffness. It is the force required to produce unit displacement in the structure. For a time-dependent load, inertial forces due to mass of the ball come into picture that act in the opposite direction of the movement. For the sake of simplicity, we have ignored damping of the system. In the case of ground motion, there is no external force acting on the ball, and the inertial forces are generated due to the acceleration of the ball, which is the sum of the relative acceleration and ground acceleration. This results in the following equilibrium equation, which could also be written as this could be further simplified to where omega is the natural frequency of the system. Thus, the response of the system is only controlled by the natural frequency of the structure. We could use this information to simplify the process. By substituting the natural frequency of a model into the above equation, we can predict the response time history of the system. Since we are only concerned about the maximum value, we could plot it over a graph representing the natural frequency on the x-axis and response on the y-axis. By simply varying the natural frequency of the model, we could generate another response time history and store its maximum on the graph. In this manner, we could generate the response for all the desired frequencies. This plot is termed as the response spectrum, corresponding to a particular time history. It contains the information of the maximum response of any system when subjected to this time history. We could generate multiple such response spectrums for different input time histories and envelop them to get the design spectrum. And that is it. Once created, it could be used to directly predict the maximum response of any structure in a given seismic zone. We could just evaluate the structure's natural frequency and get the corresponding response from the spectrum without undergoing the tedious calculations. In reality, the buildings are not as simple as the ball with the stick model. They are complex and require thousands if not millions of degrees of freedom to describe their response. To apply the concept of response spectrum for their analysis, they are first decomposed to multiple simple configurations with the help of eigen decomposition, which is a topic for a separate video.